So every great now and then, um, someone purchases a backlight kit, one of these like these ribbon cable based ones, and I don't know, something happens. Person who's installing it gets in over their head, doesn't doesn't quite realize what's involved with the install, um, overestimates their ability, whatever it is, and they end up damaging the hardware. Now. In some cases, these people tend to then complain to the manufacturer, or excuse me, the vendor, and say, hey, you shipped me something bad, and, well, some vendors end up just taking the refund because it's easier than dealing with the eventual chargeback that's coming. But anyway, those kits that get shipped back usually just end up getting thrown out because you can't sell them as a new kit. Um... One of the vendors that I regularly work with, Retro Game Repair Shop, sends me some of these kits every now and then. Uh, you know, maybe I can play around with them, scavenge parts, fix them, what have you. They sent me this one a while back. Uh, I'd managed to fix the LCD connector on this one, but it's still somehow missing pins. I genuinely have no idea how the person did that, but here we are. Um... I was going to try and fix this one, just desolder this connector and solder on a new connector with one of the kits they just sent me, but I have a better idea. Now, I didn't realize this at first, but this is a funny playing kit that they sent me, and generally, you know, given the choice between the two, funny playing kits are generally the better, the better kit. Um, I do, I do really like the new PCB variant of this kit uh, but I mean given the choice between these two I'll take the funny playing kit any time now I was still getting ready to just swap the uh, connector from the funny playing kit over to the uh, one chip kit here because most people are gonna look at this and go oh well this thing's totally dead there's no saving that um, Whoever tried installing this managed to rip the ribbon cable nearly in half, and unfortunately, there's no real easy way to fix this, um, but damn it, I'm going to try anyway. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, get some isopropyl alcohol over here. And uh, saturate a cotton swab with some isopropyl alcohol and just clean up this area of the ribbon because I'm going to put some tape on here to try and reinforce it so it doesn't rip any further, you know, by accidentally tugging on something. And I just want to make sure that this tape sticks as well as possible. And so if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up, that's the key. All right. Give the background noise if you can hear it. I've got the 3D printer going. side. And again, this is just to prevent it from uh, getting any worse. This is not actually fixing anything. I'm 
Okay, that should be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and desolder these wires dangling off here before anything happens to these. Just to make it a little bit easier to work with. New tip on my soldering iron, by the way. I'm rather, rather digging it. <sighs> All right, so let's let's take a look at what we got here. So yeah, it's ripped up. You can see it goes through quite a few of the data lines, but there are still quite a few of them intact. If I were to plug this in, it probably wouldn't work. It'd probably only partially work. Yeah, I don't know. Let's, let's actually see what happens. Why not? I need 40 pin. Ugh. Of course, the only 40 pin donor I have doesn't have a working power switch, but that's okay. We'll, we'll make it work. Um, before I take that apart though, so we can see on this side, see this thick trace running up the side here? That is a power line, and that is completely severed on the 32 pin side of the connector. On the 40, to, on the 40 pin side, it runs on the other side of the uh, um, rip, and is still completely intact. So. If we plug in to a 40 pin Game Boy Advance, it might still partially work. Probably not, but um, if it works at all, we're going to have um, like a corrupt screen. It's not gonna, it's not gonna display all the data channels or the color channels. But we'll try it anyway. See what happens. You know what? I have a better idea instead of taking this thing apart. Save this for later because this thing needs work just for testing anyway. Sorry, I'm very off my game tonight. It's been a doozy of a day. That's okay. I'm going to take apart my funny playing install that I did a while back that has a Retro 6 rear housing on it right now because I was just doing some battery testing with it. I'm not completely done, but done enough. Or at the very least I'm waiting for waiting for more parts before I can continue testing. So I can use this for parts, but this is a 40 pin Game Boy. This works perfectly fine. And I need to take it apart anyway. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I do have this thing wired up. But, let's just desolder it. Pop this out of here. I will need this, but we'll test it out of the case. Side so I don't ruin anything. And we need a screen for testing. I'll go 
grab one of my uh, salvage screens here. I'm still working on. Just in the off chance I accidentally damage it. Won't be heartbroken. Alright, let's get a power supply going. That's a bit high. There we go. Alright, let's see what happens. It's probably not going to work at all, but if it works partially... No, it does work partially. Alright, so we just get garbled screen here. Um, kind of what I expected. But yeah, the Game Boy is booting. Um, I'm genuinely surprised it works as much as it does. But just to... Just to prove there's no shenanigans. Let's test it with the other kit that I just removed from this. Hey! How the fuck? There we go. I probably just killed this Game Boy by feeding it 10 volts. That's fucking excellent. Oh, that is just what I needed today. Oh, there it goes. See, screen works. Other kit works. Alright, so I'm going to turn that off. Because we're not going to need it again for a very long time. Pull this out of here. Set this aside. Alright, so here's the strategy, and I'm actually not going to film this whole thing. I'm going to set up a time-lapse camera, because even though I'm sure you guys want to see this, I'm just... This is going to take a few hours, and I don't want to make a two-and-a-half-hour long video again, as much as some of you guys might want that. So, let's discuss the strategy. So the reason I'm doing this, if this were a, um, a one-chip kit, one of these, I wouldn't even bother, mostly because these kits are lower quality, but also because these solder joints are significantly more difficult to get at. However, on these funny playing ones, we have these bigger chips right here uh, that, quite frankly, are a bit easier to get to. So if we put this in continuity mode, this is the wrong multimeter, it does not beep. That's okay. Just put the screen in camera. You can see when we connect those, there's zero resistance. I am fairly certain that if we probe one by one on each of these pins, I'll be able to figure out what goes where. See? Just like that. So this rightmost pin right here connects to the second rightmost pin on uh, this chip here. And I bet if we go over one, we can repeat that pattern, so on and so forth. I bet each one of these chips handles um, red, green, and blue video data or something like that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to solder to these pins here, connect them straight up over here. So I'm going to test on my known good ribbon, see what it's supposed to be connected to, like that. And then on my ribbon that's ripped, I'm going to solder to that pin and to that pin 
and connect them up with some enamel magnet wire. Uh, it is going to mean that this kit can never be connected into a 30 pin Game Boy, but it should work just fine on a 40 pin Game Boy. And the reason I'm choosing to solder to this connector, because, well, A, it's right here, it's so much easier, uh, but the biggest reason is because of this power line right here that is still intact on the other connector. It's not intact on this one, and there is no place to solder to it except right at the pin, unless I try stripping back some of this uh, insulation on the ribbon, which I've never done before. I don't know if I can do. Um, hopefully there should be zero issues. These are the exact same revision ribbon. Uh, V1.03, so I should have zero issues. Um, everything that's connected on this ribbon should be connected in the exact same place on this one. So yeah, it's going to be a while. <laughs> I'm going to be here for for, uh, for a long time, but yeah, like I said, I'm just going to do a time lapse because it's going to be a while. So. Give me a few minutes, let me go ahead and get that set up, and then I'll switch back to this camera when I'm ready to test something out. Oh, um, before I do that, I'm going to be using, if I can find it, eh, you'll see. Um, I'm using some mag enamel magnet wire. I don't normally use it for stuff, but with how little space I have to work with, I don't really have a choice. Um, I'll have to go find it, but I'll be back.
All right, not sure how much of that you might have caught. Um, I just put this tape down, but it is not sticking the way I want it to, so I'm not going to keep that there. Um, that was kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, I think the most difficult part was getting these stupid enamel wires tinned. I just, I'm not, I'm not good at that part. Um, I got everything soldered and then, you know, I, I kept going down the line and I kept finding uh, a few different uh, traces that should have been disconnected but were connected. And then I'd keep going and then I'd find more disconnected ones and that didn't quite make sense to me. I later figured out exactly what that was, but yeah. Um, and then I found out completely accidentally that I had a short to ground on one of my data lines. Um, and I couldn't figure out what it was coming from because as far as I could tell, all my soldering was good. Um, ultimately, I think it ended up being the uh, ripped portion because on this side it's just ground plane and on this side is the signals. So I think what happened was the ground plane from this side was shorting to the signal on this side and just cutting out the rest of uh, the rest of the ribbon seem to resolve that. Um, I'm sure quite a few of you, if you saw that, <laughs> I'm sure quite a few of you cringed when I was doing that, but I mean, I didn't, didn't quite have a choice, so, okay. I'm just reinforcing this thing with more tape now that the, uh, parts holding it together are is even thinner than ever before. But that's nothing more Captain Tape won't fix. Okay. So yeah, I just cut out cut out the ribbon and that seemed to solve my short. I also did realize that for the vast majority of that previous section, I was working completely out of frame. Sorry, um, not much I can do about that. I haven't actually tested this yet, ever since clearing that ground issue, so there might still be a missing data line or something. But I'm just, I'm just so stoked that I gotta try it, and I'm feeling real confident that it's gonna work, so here goes nothing. Oh no! Damn, I thought that was it. It's so close though. It looks the same as before, interestingly. Oh, that's interesting. I will say I haven't had the Game Boy crash before while doing this. There's got to be another short somewhere then. Oh, that's so disappointing. So close. Let's disconnect that. Let's run the uh, aging cart. Maybe that'll give me a clue. This doesn't work though. I'm just going to have to pause the video and keep troubleshooting off camera. Uh, plug the screen in, why don't we? Oh! What? That looks perfect. I think. Taste. Oh, shoot, that's not what I wanted. 
and it definitely doesn't look perfect. Red is fine. Green is fine. So the problem is with my blue data lines. Wait. Jeez, that's... That's very blue. I don't think... Wait, that's supposed to be black, I think. Green, red... Let me start from the beginning again, and then we'll try this on a normal Game Boy. So, that's the, um... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, man. I'm just gonna find my easy flash. It's in the Game Boy, here we go. AGB test cart now. What do I have it named? Probably test? Oh, that was it. I forgot to hold the shoulder buttons. Apparently my shoulder buttons don't work. Nice. I'll work on this thing. What? <laughs> it jumped right in. It didn't even do the reset. That was... Huh. Okay. Now it, uh, confused, but okay. Okay, so that's the flicker adjuster. Fun fact, I need to actually adjust this screen. All right, so the next image should be white, which if I recall correctly, would be all colors all on. Let me see if I can get this thing to progress. So it's pink which means we are missing a data, a data line. Next one is black, which is kind of fuzzy. Red is perfect. Green is perfect. Last one should be blue. Okay, so we have either missing blue or a short on blue. I'm guessing it's a short by what this is doing. I can't see it at all in my phone screen, but when we were on the black screen, oh, maybe ink, no. I don't know if my phone's picking this up. Oh, there's a membrane right here. I'm going to use that instead. These tweezers. Oh god, what's this even supposed to be? That's what that's supposed to look like. Oh, but now that's working. What the fuck? I wonder if it's a problem with my soldering then? We're gonna let it run through the normal test. Okay.
I mean, it's still significantly better than it was. Y'all saw that. I wouldn't be happy playing games like this, though. came loose. Switch it off and try it again. These things are incredibly difficult to to tin. So I might have uh, poorly tinned one or more. I don't remember where this one was soldered. Is that this one? Yep. That's connected. And then all these were uncon... Oh, is that ground still connected? It is. Okay. So this is the one I noticed I had a short ground on. And there's no short ground now. I forget which one this is. pin is still connected. And so on. I don't know where this one oh that one goes right there. So we'll probably start moving over to this one. The only other thing I can think of is that there might just be a short to ground on one of these other pins. That's not it either. Um, oh, I wonder if running this wire right over that inductor was a good idea. Probably not. move this away from the power regulation portion if it was that simple. Just interference from power, because it was almost kind of, sort of, intermittent. It was working partially at some point. I'm concerned that I won't be able to get this working. Not that I need another funny playing ribbon, I just, I don't know, I thought this would be fun video. Nope, that wasn't it. Ooh, 
That might be it. Let's uh, resolder this. Because this wire is not even connected. I can't grip it with the freaking. Oh, I think that's it. Let me stop talking with that. Let's uh let's solder it. Ooh. I'm all excited. That's an easy one, too. Iron's not even on. Oops. Just add a couple drops. Some flux. This thing heat up. This new tip was uh, definitely a great idea for this. I don't think I would have been able to do this with the tips I had. And I know this thing looks huge, but it is very sharp. Very fine point. Well, it wasn't that inductor, that's for sure. But I'm thinking just moving those wires away from the inductor broke that joint, which was shitty to begin with, and led me to discover that, so hopefully that's it. If that's not it, though, at, at, seriously, at this point, I am just going to call it a night. Need to take a break, feed the cat, recoup, etc. Tweezers. Oh no. Uh. Alright, well maybe there's one more. I'll just give them all a little test wiggle. Could be that one. Uh, I don't know. They're all relatively solid. I think it might be this one though. Oh, did that just get worse? I hope not. Hmm. Okay. Maybe one more. I don't think this is it though.
I'm not feeling confident about this one. It is worth noting that there could have been a pre-existing condition with this ribbon. And that the previous owner just happened to decide that ripping it was the easiest solution. Oh, I gotta turn the iron on again, whoops. I was so confident that I turned it off. Do the one next to it too. Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have redone this one. Maybe I just need more flux. That scared me. I'm turning my iron off because it gets really hot in the stand. Especially when I've been using it as long as I have. Like I just mean because it's been on for a few hours at this point. I have no idea how long I was sitting there doing that. I think that was at least two hours. Where's the bat? Oh, there it is. Alright, but this time, for real, if that's not it, I'm done. I, I swear, I will turn this car around. Where are my tweezers? Did I lose them already? There they are. Uh, my Game Boy won't boot. There it goes. Oh god, it's even worse now. Yeah. Still not fixed. But see, I think... Like, is it something with my wiring? Is there another short still? It's nothing at this side of the cable.
Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But I think I'm gonna call it a night. Jiggle a few of these real quick. I could also have my wiring wrong. Like, there could be nothing wrong with my soldering, I just have it connected up to the wrong pin. I'll have to double check that. Oh my god. Is that it? Is it the connector? Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I have killed a few of these screens using them for testing. I never use the good ones, mind. But So I've narrowed it down to the connector on the ribbon. It still doesn't look right, but it looks a lot better when I do that. Look at that. Looks great, aside from the colors being slightly off. <sighs> okay, one more. I'll try one more thing. Only because I've actually discovered something. See zero issues with it. That's not going to stop me from drowning it in flux and then trying to resolder it. made it so much worse. Nice. Okay, that's not bad. I can come back. That was a noise I didn't like from my 3D printer. Oh, fuck! Fuck! Well, it's done now. Fucking connectors.
All right, well, let me do the other side real quick and try it out one more time. Okay. That side went smoothly. Of course it did, because I've already fucked up the connector. All right, maybe these last two pins don't matter. You know, maybe they're redundant or something. Hopefully. Bending that one back in place. See, I told I, I I I told you though there could have been a compound issue. That's what makes troubleshooting so hard with something unknown like this. If there's a compound issue, you spend all your time working on one thing, trying to fix it, throwing everything you have at it, and things that should work don't. And then you find out that uh, it wasn't because you fucked up, but because it was just fucked up. Nope. It's done. Yep, we need a new connector on this. I'm confident in saying that I fixed it other than this connector though. Okay, well I guess I'll carry on uh, with this later. I think this video is done, and uh, I'll try popping a new connector in this next time, in another video. I'll go ahead and put my Game Boy Advance back together with a working ribbon, and uh, I'll see if I can track down these connectors. Sorry I couldn't end this on a, uh, oh man, I don't totally fix this note, but it is what it is. I could have had it if I didn't fuck up at that last second. I should have just gone to bed, but I got greedy. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Have a good night. What do you think of Mako soldering? Who the fuck is Mako? M-A-H-K-O? Never heard of him. Or her.